Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was given the topic midlife crisis, pero hindi yata kayo ang the exact audience. Supposed to be I talk about quarter life crisis rather than midlife. Right? Uh, I just response this one because many pastors towards the ending of ministry, we heard a lot of problems. But before that, let's bow our heads for prayer. Loving Father, what a joy to come before you. We thank you for these young people who have come. Thank you for preparing their lives for the ministry of the gospel. As we share some aspect of their ministerial life, thank you for helping us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Midlife crisis is a common problem in our church today, especially among ministers. Now, what is, what is good in midlife crisis is that women at the age of 36 to 45, they experience midlife crisis, but they are not so dangerous like men. Men experience midlife crisis at the age of 45 to 60. Now, before crisis come, let's look at Christ rather than crisis. Let's look at Proverbs, okay? Proverbs 19, 14, houses and riches are inheritance from the Lord, from the fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Meaning to say, young people, to have a wife is not your choice, but you need to ask first to the Lord before casting the choice. Right? No subject has given more humor than marriage. A marriage counselor asked one, a couple, he says, when did you first start having disagreement? The wife said, ah, it all started when he wanted to be in all the wedding photos. Did you get the point? You don't understand because you are not yet married. Then there is a wife who was crying because the dog ate some of the food he had prepared for the husband. Attempting to console her, the husband said, don't worry, honey, we'll buy another dog. Despite the humor, however, marriage is no laughing matter. It is the most life-challenging relationship. As someone noted that marriage is like eating with chopstick. It looks so easy until you try it. Yet, it is also has the potential of being life most satisfying relationship. Oh, someone here was, has forgotten. Okay, there, let me. Okay. There was an author who claims that the highest happiness on earth is married. Every man who is happily married is a successful man, even if he has failed in everything else. Don't agree with that. Before you see, I do. Proverbs 18.22, He who finds a wife or a husband finds a good thing or obtain favor from the Lord. But good things are spoiled by bad motives. Young people here in the university is the most beautiful and appropriate time for making strong, quality, enduring relationship during courtship. Do not follow the trend. What's the, what's the trend? The trend is uh, fast foods. Very fast in courting, very fast in breaking. How can you build good relationship? Marriage is an investment. So you start it carefully, very strong foundation. Or Ellen White says, long observation and short engagement. Many of you have short engagement and very long, what? You are suffering. After
matter you see I do. I'm, I'm running fast. You don't know what you get until the wedding is done. Why? That's why we say build a very strong foundation of relationship. Reason because while you are still single, there are things that are hidden not to be manifested because you might get discouraged. Or to put it in some the popular language, when you are still sweetheart, you wear a lot of plastics. Plastics character. Not showing the reality. And so, to have a strong relationship family in the ministry, build it very strong while you are young. Okay? How? Oh, here is the secret. Love one another and love another one. Okay? Meaning to say, in that relationship, focus to love that person. If this is, Lord, if this is the woman, this is the man, show me, reveal to me. So love another one. I'm not saying love one another and another woman. I am not saying that. Okay? Married life is like a banking. Don't you know that? Those, we who are married, we know that every time you make you share, you accomplish good things. Things go to the bank deposit. And then, every bad thing done, it is like withdrawal of your bank deposit. Don't allow your deposit to be depleted. Simple care, birthdays, anniversary, anything that you have to remember, put that in the bank as deposit. Because every time also you disagree, your deposit, there's a lot of withdrawal. When you keep on quarreling, all have been withdrawn. What happened? Crisis. Okay? You ask older ministers. Midlife crisis. According to Henry and Richard Black Cabby, Sexual sins or immorality is the number two of the top ten faithful of the spiritual leadership. Midlife crisis starts at the age of 40 to 60. And I don't have time to read. It is signs of midlife crisis. But once you get married, my counsel is burn all bridges. You mean to say, if you are a little bit of theology and a little bit playboy, hmm? this year your sweetheart, another year, another one, next year, until graduation, and then you married from another planet. How can you make a solid foundation when you are doing that? Because you are in the limelight light of the ministry. Many our young ladies in the church will look at you as if you are Superman. However, let me just tell you that in midlife crisis at the age of 45, there are a lot of questions happen to you. You will say, this is my wife? Why the legs is very thin? Is this my wife? Why the legs look like a logs? My ideal is this one. Now it's starting to question why I had married this woman. That's part. Many questions is this. As a lot of that, and one of the signs of those uh, engaged in midlife crisis is that they're going to the Facebook and look at their sweetheart during high school. Where they are now, probably you find GPS and locate them. That's now a sign of midlife crisis. Now you have a stable job. You want to exchange another job. That's a sign. Now you enter you are not playing tennis. You are a basketball player. Then at the age of 45, 50, 55, you want to play tennis. These are good. 
Because midlife crisis is an adventure of new things. We are all positive if you can manage. But if you cannot manage, that's the danger. Okay, today midlife crisis might be a topic that is a stranger to you. But you need to understand, it happened many times in institution. You have heard ministers that are exceptional. They love their wives, their family, their children. However, you have known that they are now under discipline because of immorality. They are not bad ministers. They are not bad husbands. But they fall into the trap of midlife crisis. What is good with women is that midlife crisis, when this come to them at the age of 38 to 45, they just buy perfume, clothes, sleeper, shoes, they are engaged in beauty. But men, you know right already that life, one of the gifts of God is sex. While you are young, husband and wife active. But towards the end, it's just like an ocean. The ebbing and the tiding. Right? What if your wife is now passive? And you are so aggressive. You need to be careful. Because if your wife says no, and then says, ah, no, I will find somebody who will say yes. Be careful with that. Or sometimes it's the opposite. The woman is so active the husband is sleeping. You need to care carefully. That's why you need to know who you are, your capacity, your ability, because really life is coming to that. And the key word is understandable and management. So you need, there's a lot of that. And so we find anywhere any institution affected by crisis. Now, I know I have experienced midlife crisis, but since I was lecturing, there was a time that I said, where was my sweetheart when we were high school? Now I know that I have that. I did not entertain that because I know worse. I have several, my colleagues, I taught them, oh, this is midlife crisis. Be careful because in midlife crisis, your children are finishing, and yet when you commit immorality outside family, the entire family is on shame. Very difficult to recover. But you need to manage. How to manage? First, before crisis come, tell your wife to be, be, be very vigilant to you. I like that. The wife is vigilant. Oh, daddy, uh -huh. it seems that in the church, you are not looking at me, but you are looking to a beautiful woman during sermon. Ah, this is dangerous. Right? I told my wife to be vigilant. You help me. You understand me because this is the way how we should maintain the purity of life. Because our children... Because, you know, that matter of happiness is just minutes, but you will regret throughout life. That's the problem with the crisis. Okay? Now, as I said, married life has its ebbing and tiding, and this contributes some aspect of midlife crisis. Sometimes at this phase, I discussed that already, what you need to look at, you go to the internet, Click. What are the signs of midlife crisis and how to manage? We have very short time. Now, what we need in the time of that crisis is resiliency. What do you mean by resiliency? The capacity to bounce back so that you can balance. Because sometimes in this midlife crisis, you don't listen even counselor. 
because you are engaged in a relationship. Now, is your family tough enough when the going gets struck? Characteristics, commitment. Do not marry a woman that is too beautiful and whose face is never mind. Because you will feel insecure. When your wife is too beautiful, you cannot avoid young men looking, oh, the pastor's wife, so beautiful. And then they have a daydream with your wife. And you get angry. But if your wife also, as if the way your wife has gotten a knife and poke you, or marry me or not, there's also a problem. There was a minister who was engaged with that. Supposed to be, he was to be ordained. He was my friend. But his helper was so beautiful rather than the wife. And so he would say, Mama, uh, where is our helper? Why? I like the way she cooks our food. I tell you, I pity on him today. Good today that he has a job. But two of them, they are my colleague at Mountain View College. It happened because of that. And so, you are Filipino, uh, excluding foreigner. But principle is the same. When you get helper, your wife must be beautiful than your helper. Otherwise, your helper will help you into the trap of midlife crisis. That's why I told you, burn all bridges, have focus. You ask us ministers who are in the COT, we will tell you really that why we are here today, at this point in life, even we are old, reason our wives are vigilant and husband and wife are committed. And in time of crisis, face together that crisis. Never leave your spouse to have that alone. Carry all the burdens and it will help you. Number two is cohesion. Meaning to say try to have quality time because I don't know if you are secretive because when you get married secretive has no place. It should be an open communication that would help you prevent this crisis. Then adaptability, because there is a change. Life is a constant changing. Oh, when my wife married me, I have a very thick hair. Today, I have 13 pieces. But my wife did not change, because she knows. I told her, Mama, what if I lost all my hair? You know already my, my generation said, so I'm not marrying your hair. Keep quiet, keep quiet. <laughs> what I mean is a cohesion is what you need. But you can only do that when you have quality foundation. The third is adaptability. Adaptability in a sense, whatever is the crisis, you know how to manage. Right? And then you know already, women speak 24,000 words. And men speak only 12,000. Sometimes I believe that women are best preacher rather than men. Right? But sometimes when they get older, they are become more noisy. And then you get irritated and then you box the wall and sometimes your wife. <laughs> Avoid that. You know, when I was single, I have a sweetheart in Sambuanga City. Don't tell my wife about this. <laughs> and the mother called the daughter and said, come, come, come. I don't like that Habien. You look at his face. He will make you as a punching bug when you get married. <laughs> when I look at myself, do I look like Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> you know, I cried because that's the first time I had a sweetheart who was 70 Adventists. Then, 
I never courted for the next six years. The reason, because I have that stigma. When I get married, I will make my wife as a pansing bug. So when I get married, even pinching my wife, I try to avoid that because the prophecy might be fulfilled. <laughs> but that is not me. It is not me. Meaning to say, we have to be adaptive in anything. Open communication, connectedness, and resourceful management. When there is a problem in family, to me, when I was a young minister, married, I have a pastor who can, I can call 12 o'clock, can come to my house anytime, and I can tell him anything about me, and he will never tell somebody, and he's going to help me. That is what we need. When I was a young worker of Dabao Mission, he says, don't trust so much the ministerial secretary because they are your pastors. Sometimes the mysterious secretary, oh, they will are going to help you. But what if you have committed something? Can he help you? Or secretary for your downfall? And he told us, Pastor Serrano told us, be careful with ministerial secretary, especially if there are grudges that you have done while you are young ministers. Whether you like it or not, human are humans. They are not animals. Sometimes people think of you as like that, but that should not be. Resolve, resource management. You need a counselor, a fellow pastor, an elder of the church whom you can confide so that in the time of crisis, you can stand because of these people. Here at EUP, I'm looking Oh, who shall be the person? Because what this is what we need. Body, body, ba. Right? It's not bully, bully. Body that will help you support one another. So in this midlife crisis, you can enjoy because of good development. But you need only to be careful, finances and women. That's our danger as ministers. And we never have problem, as I said, let's focus more on Christ rather than in crisis. That's it. Now, for example, me, if I'm away for one month, two months at home, I have only one picture in my mind. My wife, my two children, not other picture. That's a dangerous. Why? Because this ministry, we need a commitment, loyalty, and we need to keep it pure. And you know already in the Adventist ministers, while we are so good, people help us. But by the time we fall, we find a lot of Pharisees living in the 21st century. When we fall, they push us down rather than help us. This is our problem as a Pharisee. The Pharisee did not die in the time of Jesus. They are alive today. What we need is a body, a minister, or a friend, even far distant, can help you stand in the time of crisis. Because we don't stand alone. We need somebody. And so, since my time is very short, oh, 35, sorry, sobrang ng limang minuto. Next time we will discuss this in more elaborate and I can give you more tips about that because reason, when you have these five resiliency character, our marriage will last and then our relationship lasts. Now, let me share to you my children. My children now, they are big. But whenever I'm away, one or two days, two nights, I told that in my class, my children does not leave, sleep in their own room. They sleep in the entrance. They carry the mattress, 
put the mattress there and then tell, if Papa comes, I'll be the one to open the door. And the mother say, okay, Mama, three of them there because my two children pulled their mother, so let's wait for Papa. That's exciting. I want to share with you, it's not an happenstance because I have a cohesiveness with my children. When they were small, when I come home from trouble, okay, my boy will open the door and says, Papa, oh, you're coming. Where is the nice thing? Ah, he is watching there because of the nice thing. That's why when I'm invited, I always tell, tell the church, oh, you invited me three nights. And I cannot go home without anything for my children. So I tell them. So that's it. Now they are college, but the same. When I'm away, my girl got sick. He will call me, Papa, I'm sick, I want to see you. And then say, I said, okay, what you're going to do? I will come home two weeks from now. He said, okay, I got your picture and sleep with me. My boy got sick. He said, Papa, if I can hug you, don't bring me to the doctor. Oh, when I come home, I hug him, the fever is gone. Why? Because while we are still preparing for marriage, we read with my wife, Ellen White, Adventist Home. That book you ought to have because they will never be irrelevant. They are always updated how we rear our family, our children, and how we relate to others. Let's see to it that when time comes in your midlife crisis, it's not a crisis, but a blessing because you handle such order that other people have fallen. Thank you very much. God bless you. No question and answer.